system in a way that has hurt everyone. This is the government trying to bail out the private sector. My issue is only that when taxpayer money is put at risk, the government better think three, four times before they start dishing out that money. What we need is open, more transparency, like regulation, but with penalties which are onerous. It requires clarity of purpose and policy. Catch capitalism in crisis at these times only on CNBC TV 18. The latest issue of Overdrive on Stands Now. This is TV 18. And you're watching CNBC TV 18. Good evening and welcome to this news update. I'm Sumaira Abdi. Now the big story this Saturday evening. Uh, team Anna has once again caught the government on the wrong foot. Anna Hazari has rejected the report by the Parliamentary Standing Committee on the Lokpal Bill. Anna in fact hit out of the government for the exclusion of the lower bureaucracy. Anna says he'll go on a token fast tomorrow at the Jantar Mantar in New Delhi. Meanwhile, sources have said that the government will call an all-party meet on Wednesday to discuss the Lokpal bill. Moving on, the Congress is on the defensive in the 2G case as well as the opposition mounts pressure on the UPA to oust Home Minister P. Chidambaram. Telecom Minister Kapil Sibyl has come out in support of the Home Minister saying that Chidambaram had no role in the spectrum pricing. The NDA, besides some individuals, is making an attempt to malign and defame Sri P. Chidambaram, Home Minister. We in government categorically, categorically reject all such allegations. Government is aware that there may have been irregularities or misconduct in the implementation of the policy. And that's all we have on this news update. Thanks for watching. Stay with CNBC TV 18. Presented by HSBC Commercial Banking. It has been observed that one third of the companies listed in Fortune 500 are family run businesses. But in the case of India, this ratio is very high. And this creates problem of its own. As business grows, they start splitting like amoeba and very few of them survive beyond second or third generations. Studies have shown that sibling rivalry is the main cause for family-run businesses splitting in India. According to Bloomberg Business Week, about 40% of family-owned businesses in the US enter the second generation while only 13% make it to the third generation. And this number is even lower in India. A few years back, Professor K. Ramachandran of ISB did a study that looked at Indian business families that survived three generations and are now into the fourth generation. These families are Dabar, Murugappa, Kirloskar, Wadia and Godrej Group. This study is an eye-opener as it shows that just a handful of family-run businesses have survived three generations. Perhaps being a low-profile company, Hindustan National Glass and Industry was not on Professor Ramachandran's radar. This Kolkata-based glass bottle manufacturer promoted by Sumanis is into the third generation. Take a look at Hindustan National Glass story and you know how to make it big by being a single product company for three generations. In the comedy movie Gods Must Be Crazy, an empty Coca-Cola bottle thrown out of a plane lands in Kalhari Desert and transforms the life of Bushmen in Africa forever. As for the first time, they are exposed to a whole new world. Well, this one is a purely fictional story. But quite a similar story took place in real life. A glass bottle changed the life of Chandra Kumar Sumani forever. 
with a 19-year-old CK Somani who had entered the portals of the college was pulled out in the middle of his academic pursuit by his father, Mulidhar Somani, to run the glass bottle manufacturing unit of Hindustan National Glass or HNG as it is popularly known today. To cut the chase then, in 1952, CK's father had the foresight of installing an automated glass bottle machinery unit imported from Lynch Corporation USA. But much to his dismay, he could not find the right person to run this sophisticated machine which had the capacity to produce 30 tons of bottles per day. Thus fell the burden on young CK. To his credit, one must say that instead of cribbing or quibbling, young CK took the challenge head on. Even as he was running the business, he quickly acquired degree courses in mold design from Lynch Corporation and in electronic process control in glass industries from Honeywell USA. He totally immersed himself in learning the art and craft of bottle making. Today, the Kolkata headquartered Hindustan National Glass and Industries is the market leader in container glass market with 55% market share with a turnover of 1,673 crore rupees. Hindustan National Glass has six bottling manufacturing units across the country with one in Germany and has raised its capacity from 30 tons per day in 1952 to 2,930 tons per day in 2011. All this has been possible through three domestic acquisitions and one international acquisition. It has an operational capacity of 12 furnaces and 48 production lines with fully automated machines. It has one of the widest portfolios for container glass ranging from 5 milliliters to 3200 milliliters in diverse colors like amber, flint and green. It has been a long journey to success for Hindustan National Glass and Industries. Till the year 1999, Hindustan National Glass had a 24% market share with a turnover of 182 crore rupees. Being in the business for half a century by then, it had all the necessary expertise and knowledge to understand the game of bottling, while its competitors were groping in the dark and seemed to have lost their path. What added to the company's success was the entry of CK Somani's son Mukul Somani who joined the business in 1986 at the age of 22 after his graduation in commerce. He spearheaded the company to the next level through various risky acquisitions. I think uh, there is a good combination of old and new thoughts in HNG. If you see Mr. CK Somani who has been spearheading the group for so long, I mean, he is uh, one, I mean, who has brought uh, the company to this stage, but then ever since Mukul has taken over, today HNG where it is, I mean, I think Mukul has contributed a lot. So, this th combination of old and new thoughts, I think it has played miracles for the group. In January 2001, HNG's major competitor Owens Buckway, a world leader in glass bottle manufacturing, was in doldrums and began making heavy losses. It decided to sell off. HNG jumped at the opportunity and bought over loss making Owens Buckway in 2003. From the two plants it had in Rishra, Kolkata and Bahadurgarh, Haryana, HNG acquired Owens two plants at Rishikesh, Uttarakhand and Puducherry and capacity doubled to 1,100 tons per day. Its market share zoomed to 60% from the 24% earlier and turnover jumped to 436 crore rupees in 2004. This acquisition taught HNG one big lesson. Inorganic growth was a way to build capacities faster to cater to the increasing demand. What helped is the Somani's acumen to turn around loss-making companies. That gave Hindustan National Class the confidence to buy out its other major competitors in India. It bought Larson and Two Bros Glass Division at Nasik in 2005 and then Haryana Sheet Glass Unit at Nimrana, Rajasthan in 2007. It as recently as May 2011 made its first overseas acquisition in which it acquired an operationally stressed unit of Germany-based Agenda Glass which had filed for bankruptcy. Hindustan National Glass is to pump in 321 crore rupees over the next year. What has kept Hindustan National Glass growing is the increasing demand for liquor in the country. Liquor and beer industries are the main users of container glass with 60% contribution to turnover followed by pharmaceuticals 20%. 
skincare products 10%, beverages 5% and cosmetics and others 5%. Name the industry and its top player is HNG's customer. From the Pepsis and the Cokes to United Spirits to Saab Miller to Supla and Glaxo to Unilever and Nestle and many more. They are a company that has um, uh, been open to global best practices. Uh, they look at new technologies and they bring them to India. In terms of uh, the Sprite uh, green glass bottle which we launched with them in the year 2000, they were the ones who uh, brought in the green glass uh, 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 to us in India and uh, uh, adapted their furnaces to produce that uh, uh, type of product for us. Uh, then later we came up with the, the spin bottle in Fanta. Uh, so when we innovated with the new bottle for Fanta and Limca glass, uh, they again um, came forward and they worked with us to develop that uh, 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 glass bottle here. Uh, among the partners that we have who have uh, helped us in achieving what we have achieved so far, uh, one of the most important uh, partners has been h and uh, uh, For beer, the uh, packaging is a very important element and uh, I wonder what would have happened if we didn't have somebody like HNG who grows to uh, the occasion every time that we are uh, demanded more out of them. The beer market has grown quite phenomenally, UV has grown faster than the market and this has been only possible because of the timely investments which are made by HNG on their capacity, on their quality and so on. So. No wonder then demand for companies' glass bottles does not seem to wane despite changing packaging needs from bottles to plastics. Evident of the fact is HNG's first greenfield project after more than 40 years. HNG is constructing Southeast Asia's largest glass manufacturing unit with an installed capacity of 650 tons per day at the highest liquor consuming state of Andhra Pradesh, involving around 800 crore rupees capital expenditure. Over the next five years, it has embarked upon an ambitious 2,500 crore rupees expansion plan to cater to rising demand from user industries, which will double its capacity to 5,975 tons per day by 2015. Hindustan National Glass in Industries is all set to move faster on the growth trajectory. But can the company surmount competition from pet bottles and tetra packing, which is gaining currency? We need to take a short break. When we come back, we will talk to CK Samani, Chairman of HNG, and his son Mukul Samani, Vice Chairman and Managing Director of HNG, to find answers to those kind of questions. Also joining us is HSBC Sandeep Kupal to give a banker's perspective.